Okay, as I was saying, Flash and uh, SWF, Swifts, they, depending on your computer, uh, you know, the person's computer, their, the version of the Flash player, the speed of the computer, the connection of the computer, the movie, the animation you might make may not play like you, mi you might think it would on their computer. Action script, action script animation, same thing. The reason I'm not going to teach that is because what I'm going to show you is more traditional animation. I don't know if tweening animation is traditional, but action script is basically you type in the code and you and you and it, it happens. Anybody use action script? Well, excuse me. You don't have to use it today. Okay, vector versus raster. I don't know if anybody knows Flash is a vector graphics tool. Basically what that is, raster, which is a bitmap, a JPEG or whatever, when it's 100%, it looks fine. But when you blow it up, of course you know how it is, you, it, it gets pixelated. Whereas vector, vectors do not store um, pixels, it stores a mathematical equation. And it basically remembers the equation to make the circle or whatever shape you draw. That way, when you blow it up to 200%, it looks sharp. The edges stay clear. Even though it doesn't look clear on here, trust me, very clear. All right, I guess since nobody has a laptop here, I'm just going to use my own workspace. You can actually, let's go to Flash here. Here's a Flash timeline. I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to change my timeline to my, my the one I modified. If you open Flash, you can actually change stuff. You can use the uh, this workspace. You can change them to whatever you want. If you like that one, you can keep it classic. And there's other ones. If you're a developer, you can actually have stuff that gets you close to where your action script is. And what I did is I basically grabbed one I was actually comfortable with, and I move stuff around. If you click on the tabs here, you can move stuff around. You can get rid of stuff. If you go to the window here, on the, on the file window, you can actually click the things you want to get rid of. If it has a check, you click that, and it'll get rid of it. But since I already did that, I'm, and then after you save it the way you like, you can click New, uh, new workspace and save it how you want. What I did already is I made mine myself. Okay. Oh yeah, the works the frames. Here is the timeline. These are layers and these are frames. What I have right here it's the frames per second. What I suggest, I don't know if you can see it right here, it's so small, 24 frames per second. It's actually right here in the properties panel as well. You can change it to whatever you want. 24 frames per second is something that's traditional, you know, like, like film, but it's also something that will easily translate to any other frame rate you might want, like 29.97, uh, PAL 25, it's easier to translate since Flash does not do a 29.97 frame rate. 24 works. All right. If you click here, you can actually change the uh, size and shape of the uh, frames. Right now they're normal. If I want to make them large, each frame is now that big. So you can actually have a better idea of what you're working with. Preview actually shows little pictures of what's inside the frame. And I'll just take it back to normal. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the drawing tools. Okay. If uh, well, who had used uh, who has used Illustrator before again? Just okay. There are some drawing tools in Flash that are very similar to. I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to go to flat file, new, and I'm going to go to general, action script free. 
Another thing about this, um, if you're going to be doing animation in Flash for video, if you go to the templates and you go to the media playback, they actually have some templates that are set up for video. You have 1080p, 720, uh, DV video. I'm going to do a 1080 HDTV. And with that template, you actually have your uh, title safe and action safe areas. So when you do animation, everything will stay there and everything will be inside the video. Okay, I'm going to show you some drawing tools. Uh, I'm going to use the paintbrush, B brush tool. And it's a pretty basic one. Since I have a, a tablet with a pen, I can actually click this icon right here and use the pressure so I can actually make my paint brushes fatter. And that is a fill, which you can change yourself. And then you have the line tool. I'm going to delete this. The line tool basically draws straight lines. Boom. And if you click down here, if you see down here, there's a little snap to objects magnet. If you click that, make sure that's done. You can actually join the lines and then um, right here is the erase tool if you double click that on the time on the toolbar it erases a stage and the bezier tool this pen this does have a bezier tool that actually can draw some bezier lines and if you choose a sub-selection tool, you can actually Like I said, if you've used Illustrator before, this should be very familiar or any other vector graphic tools. All right, that's all I really wanted to stick um, talk about the tools because we really don't have that much time and I want to get to the animation. Okay. Okay. Before we get to the animation, one more thing. Symbols. There's three types of shapes and symbols you work with in Flash. There's the the raw shape, I don't know if when you saw me paint the, the brush and you saw me drag it and, and move the, the edge, that's a shape. That's a raw graphic. It can be ma modified in the timeline and animated as well. Then there's movie clips and graphics. The thing about the two is that a graphic has a timeline that is, has to match with the main timeline and the movie clip is, has its own timeline and if you only have one frame in the movie, it will play it over and over again. For uh, linear animation, usually the graphics are the best thing to use. Oops. And again, right down here, if you, I do have this PowerPoint on, on, on that website. And here's a link down here. You can't see it because it's purple for some reason. It's a link to uh, our, you know, a, a class about the graphics, uh, the graphics and the symbols. <laughs> what else do I have here? All right. Now we're going to get to some animation. The first animation I'm going to talk about is frame by frame animation. This is the animation you would think of when you think original uh, Snow White. Every frame is hand drawn. Now, why you'd want to do that, I don't know. But it can be done in Flash. Flash has a capability of having you, you can make 24 frames a second, and you can draw in every frame if you want to. Now, why would you want to? Um, it's basically good for a very uh, detailed animation, detailed movement. For an example, let's start here. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to fill this up. Here is a shape. Can you tell it's a shape because when you click on it, click on it 
a little it highlights on it. You actually you can't see it down here, but it got like a little little dots over it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my ball to the top of the frame. Then down here I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to hit F6. F6 is going to add a keyframe in the bottom. If you notice right here, these little black dots mean that keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down. And the thing about flash animation is the frame by frame animation can take a while because you're basically doing it all yourself. Then it hits the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squash it. I'm going to hit Q which is this right here, the free transform tool, and I'm going to squash it. And then I'm going to make sure that's here, and then I'm going to squash it a little bit more. F6, squash a little bit more, and then raise it up. Now, this, is, this does take a long time, but if you do want the, oops, control Z, of course. If you do want the detail, that's the way to go. And I'm going to hit Command, Enter. And you got your frame by frame animation. Now, one might say, that's a, that's a lot of work to do for animation. I don't want to do that. That's, that's crazy. I might as well just use a piece of paper and a, and a, and a piece of chalk. It's like, yeah, yeah that's true. But there's also. I'm going to hide this frame right here. I don't like it. There's also tweens. The thing about Flash is it also has built-in tweens where you can, it will animate how I had to do each frame in between. I could have done it differently and used a, a shape tweening to do all that for me. All I, all I would have had to done is uh, do like half the keyframes that I, you know, that I did and it would have filled in the tween, the in-between frames, the tweens, which is where that comes from, tweening. I'm going to show you here how to, do it, how to do a shape tween. The first frame here is this blue circle with a green line. And the last keyframe is right here. And inside that frame is a blue, a blue square with a red outline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Click in between the two, right click, and I'm going to click Create Shape Tween. And what that's going to do is it's going to figure in the animation for me. Now, when you do a shape tween, it tweens everything. I mean, it, it changes the shape, it changes the color of the line, and it changes the color of the fill. And that, that's a great thing about that. If you, if you wanted to do something crazy like change the last frame to something else. You'll just redraw it. Now let's say I want to do something like uh, change this into another shape halfway. Just click in the middle, hit F6, and then it, it highlights. And you can move over here. You can change the shape again, turn it around, and Flash will fill that in for you. Now that's for shape tweening. And let's see, what I have, and what, I, what did I do if they completed one? Oh yeah, that's exactly what I did. Okay. Shape tweeting. Oh yes, the. Let me open that again. Open recent. One of the things about uh, 
this, the shape tweeting is that if it doesn't work out right, you can use hints. For an example, if you notice when it's when I halfway through it, if you notice here, it's basically turning the tr the square that way, and I don't want it to do that. I want it to start as a circle and flatten out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use shape hints. And here's a, here's a good hint for you. If um, if you don't know where uh, something is in the window in the in the file, you just go to help search shape hints. And then you go show shape hints. There's add shape hint. Anyway, sorry guys, uh, shape, add shape hits, boom. If you notice right there, you can't see it, it's a little red dot. There's an A in the middle of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that to the upper left. And then I'm going to go to the last keyframe, and there's that A again. I'm going to drag that to the upper left. And what that'll do is that will tell Flash, okay, when you do a shape tween, I want you to use this shape hint to make sure it doesn't move. I want you to keep that shape hint as a, as a reference to how you move the animation. So you see, see it actually messed it up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one. Let's modify shape, add shape hint, V, uh, V, go to this corner. And that works better. See what I mean? It, it doesn't spin around. It stays, it just and that's what I wanted. So shape hints help you do, especially when you want to do like a words, when you try to shape change words, it, it, it'll mess it up. You can use the shape hints to help you with that. All right. Now, classic tween, motion tween. Okay. I'm going to, classic tweens, uh, bef I'd say before, CS4 or CS3, class tweens used to be called motion tweens. If, has anybody worked with the motion tweens? All right, so I guess I have to explain for everybody else. Motion tweens basically is like moving objects. If you see here, this ball is an object. It is a motion, motion clip. If I double click inside the, the thing, you'll see that it's one frame with the color. You can see I'm inside the ball motion clip. Classic tweens and motion tweens work with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the classic tween. The first keyframe, it's on the left, and the next keyframe is on the right. Right clip, create classic tween. And it's basically it right there. What you can also do is you click in the center grab the ball and move it up and it'll create another keyframe and you got yourself some animation there but now if you want to do something like change the uh, direction or change the path with with the uh, classic twin you can use paths so now see if you see here I drew a line just a good old-fashioned line right there and uh, below what I, I have that same movie clip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here up on up where it says layer 3. I'm going to click on the icon next to it and I'm going to double click on it. There you go. Layer 3 is a name and I'm going to make it a guide. Hit OK. And what that will do is it'll be, it'll make, you'll see the symbol change into a little T-square right there. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to the first keyframe where the, the ball is and I'm going to snap it to the end of that line and go to the last keyframe and snap it to the end of 
the end of that line, the first frame that I'm going to put in the beginning of the line. And then I'm going to click it and drag it into the guide layer. And suddenly the ball, the T-square turns into a little ball with a line on there, like a bouncing ball. And what that does, it, it will guide that line, that, that movie clip. And then when I click in the middle and create classic tween, it will follow that shape. And what I'll do is I'll go here and I will spin it around. And I'll animate that as well. Now, the Adobe discourages you from using the classic tween because the new um, motion tween they have is a little bit more uh, robust in the sense that uh, you can do a lot more with it. You can actually modify the paths. You don't need to make a, a motion path. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the new motion tune, which really isn't new because it's been around for a while. It's been around since CS3 or CS4. Does anybody remember? Four? Because I don't know when I saw I saw motion paths, the motion tweens, I thought, I'm not going to mess with it. It's too crazy. I don't know if you guys, I mean, the, it, was, it was really crazy. But getting ready for this class is like, you know, it's actually pretty good. OK, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click layer one and choose that symbol. Now this is a graph, a graphic. I'm going to click the center and create motion tween. And then what happens is there's no arrow, it just turns blue. Great thing about that is you can be in the first frame, drag it down to the corner, and you can go to the 30th frame or the 50th frame and drag it over here and you got yourself animation with a path that you can actually edit. If you notice when I put my arrow on top of it, it lets me choose it and move it around. I believe this is 5.5. And the great thing about this is that this is also a uh, you can actually use the Bezier curves. Yeah, hold on. Convert anchor point tool. Come on. Oh, I know what it is. It has to be a keyframe. How much time does a frame make up? A frame? Um, since it's 24 frames per second. Each frame is one twenty-fourth. Can you, uh, can you change that for all frames? Yes, you can. You can change it from down here in the bottom. It says frame rate. Or if you go, you can click like on the side or on the empty piece of the empty piece of the uh, stage. Let me minimize that. And go to document properties and you'll see right here where it says properties you can change the frame rate you can change the size you even can change the stage background color and another thing I found out about motion tweens is that you can delete a symbol in a, in a motion tween and replace it with another symbol and it will just replace the whole motion path automatically. In fact, you can also do that with the shape, the, the path. See this? I made a separate line here that's wiggly. I'm going to select. I'm gonna, first, I'm going to select the path that the motion guide has here, the, the motion tween. And I'm going to delete. And it just basically says it doesn't have a path anymore. It doesn't have any frame rate. Any keyframe so it just plops there. So I'm going to choose, go to this top line here, choose this line I drew, cut it, click back into this 
layer that has the uh, motion tween and paste. And what that does, it, it uses that line I, I put in there to make a new animation path. And I didn't have to do anything. I just drew the line somewhere else and I brought it in. And you can also click on the line and move it, move the animation on its own. Whereas with the motion, the old classic tween, you try to move, move, a, move the uh, item, it would make another keyframe and mess up your, your path. And one of the scary things that I didn't like about motion tweens is the, uh, where is it, the motion editor, which is basically your, if you have an After Effects background, you can actually control the X, the, the Y, the Z rotation, the skewing, the scale color effects, eases, everything from this graph. And if you don't know how this works, it could be very daunting. So, But I do have <coughs> tutorials. And here's a tutorial for the classic tween. Now, classic, the, the classic tween is still useful for some animations. And here's a motion tweeting, and there's a tutorial on uh, Adobe.com that explains it very well. And there's the uh, infamous motion editor. I still don't understand most of it. It, it. It's really daunting, but it's a lot easier now that I've actually uh, practiced it and see the, pot the potential for it. Okay, inverse kinematics. Anybody know how to say kinematics? Kinematics? All right. Um, anybody play with the inverse pneumatics tool, the bone tool in the Flash? Had success? You what? Oh, good. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody know what inverse pneumatics is? Kinematics? Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay, in inverse pneumatics, or as Flash likes to call it, bones. Here's a bone tool. Now this is something they added in, uh, you say four? I think it's four when I saw it added, but I don't remember for sure. It's a, it's a par. Introducing the text book by U U control five, so. It's been around for a while though. I wanna say, I wanna say it's four. Basically it's, you use a flash to create bones inside and you can use, you can use it to, to uh, animate shapes and symbols. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, show you how to use bones on a shape. This is of course a just a good old-fashioned normal oh no it's a hello oh that's why it's a shape. I put all this stuff for anybody that had laptops and they wanted to have the same setup as mine. But since no one has laptops, I'll just uh, preferences, drawing tools, IK bone tool auto set transformation point. If you uncheck uncheck that, one of the things I had trouble with when I was playing with the bone tool was that whenever I would make an object to turn around, I wanted it to turn on a particular point, let's say like an arm. And I wanted, to, I wanted it to turn, to rotate on a, on a certain point. And it had to be perfect, or else it'd be all wonky. But when I try to use tools, the, the bone tool to do that, it would not snap where I wanted it. It would not snap in the middle of the, the rotation point of the, gra of the symbol. So I found out that once you, if you uncheck this box, it will always snap to the rotation point of a symbol. So if you ever play with that and you, and you get that frustration, just remember that. Didn't that guy say, Jose say to go to Flash? That allows you to move the rotation point? Well, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a, in a sec here. Uh, down, okay, okay. 
first let me do the let me do the shape first, and I'll, I'll explain to you what the IK snapping crazy stuff is. Okay, we're gonna click on the bone tool right here, which is key key uh, shortcut M. Click on the bottom here, drag up. And you can see the bone starting right there, and you just keep on moving up. See how it snapped right there? Boom. It, it automatically snaps to the center, the rotation point. And then you just go. Because it just doesn't want to stay in the center. It just wants to just warm its way wherever it wants. OK. And there's the bones. And what does that do? Well, here, I'm going to click the top point, and I'm going to move it. And it's like, oh, that's great. It's just you have a, a weird looking little squill now. That's fantastic. Well, it is animatable. You can go to, say, frame 15 and hit F5. Oops, F5. And then when you go to frame 15, you can wave it down here. And you can go to frame 30, hit F5, and move this over here. Here's a hint. If you want to just move one bone, hold on the shift key, and that only that bone will turn. If not, it'll just you'll use inverse pneumatics and move all the bones in the natural way that it would be when everything's attached. So there you go. Now I'll do a uh, command enter and show you how it looks. Now, of course, this is very fast, but if you wanted to do something more detailed, it would be the, the bones tool are, is a very powerful tool you could tool you can use to do that with any shape I mean yeah yeah you, you know like like the like the puppets where you know they're puppets they're, they're Muppets but then they're like the letter R and they move around and you can do that and uh, let me go back to my right down here of course there's a a lot of a there's a ton of great tutorials on how to use the inverse pneumatics tool this one is from Adobe, and if you keep on looking on the Adobe website, you'll find tons of stuff on how to do that. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, here is a symbol. It's a bike link. I made it myself. Thank you. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first delete this, I'm going to make a bike this spike chain in, into an animatable object. So I'm going to click the bone tool. Now what I was talking about the, uh, the, uh, the IK link thing, the, what is that called? Uh, preferences, drawing, auto set transformation point, this is where it comes in. Because each of these links has a center point right here. Oops. The center point for each of them is right here. So when I turn it, it should look, you know, look halfway decent. But if, it, if, they, if the center changes right here, it's not going to look good at all. So what I want to do is I want the bones to link to the center rotation point of each link to make it look nice. So I'm going to hit the bone tool, go into the center, click and drag to boom, and it snapped to the center, then I'll let go. Move, drag, let go. And you know, once you get the hang of this, it's, it, it's not really that hard to, oh, see, this is one of the things you need to remember about bones. The last, the last object at the end of the link will not, you will not be able to have a bone. It will freely spin around. And if you have, you know, if, you, if you, there have been many workarounds with this. In, in Flash 5.5, they actually built it in 
to it, the program, but I will show you, I'll show you how to work around that with this right here on the side, the, uh, the boards. Okay, so I did that. It's all, it's all rigged, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, say, to 15 frames per second, click here, and I'm going to drag this down. Yay! Not really, yay. This actually looks dumb. It's a chain. It's supposed to have more movement than that. And the way to fix that is you go to the bones, click a bone, and double click it, and it'll highlight all the bones at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the property panel over here, and they have all these different things you can do. You can enable or disable rotation on the, jo uh, on the, on the joints. Uh, constrain or enable the rotate the joint X and Y translation, which means moves left, moves right, and spring. So what I'm going to do is work with the spring. I think spring. I think spring is something that got introduced um, in five point. I think five. Flash five. And what that'll do is it'll actually give you some natural movement. So what I'm going to do is all of them are highlighted. I'm going to do the strength to 100. Strength is resistant to, resistance to movement. Well, zero means I'll just keep on moving. It won't stop. 100 means it'll swing and then it'll stop. Damping is, you know, how easy it is. Not, I have it down here. It's in here, guys. Armatures. Anyway, I'm going to set the damping to 50. So now strength 100, damping to 50, and then when I play it, it has more of a natural chain look to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this timeline so you can see how far this animates. I'm going to go to 200. F5. And you see it just keeps on going. And you can tweak those. You can actually do, if you wanted to go you know, nuts about it, you can actually click one bone and change the properties of one bone at a time, if you were so inclined. You do, you know, the last bone have less of a strength and the top bone have more of a strength, so then you'd see it like wiggle out and stop. But this is a quick way to do it, and it uh, it does a job. Can now, I sure. Well, I guess it depends on. Uh, or how much time I guess he invested. I don't know. I want to say when I first started, I was actually just doing stuff at home, and I, my my wife would be mad. It's like, hey, but um. It was just something I, I had a passion for, and I wanted to learn how to do it, and uh, I did it. And uh, would you say the learning curve is? I would say the learning curve is pretty. If you don't want to, if you if you just want to learn it over the weekend, you might not get everything you want. But what I'm saying is that Flash does have the ability to be a very powerful animation tool if you if you if you have something in mind. You can do it. I mean, when I, I, I had in my head in, in 2000, I wanted to learn animation. And I was like, OK, let's, I'll try 3D animation. It's like, well, if I wanted to draw a tree, I had to build a 3D mesh and then put a, you know, a, a graphics on it. I needed to light it. I, need, I just draw a tree, which is why I chose Flash, because I could draw a tree in Flash, animate it, and then kick it out. And uh, back then, there were very few people. There were a few show people out there making full-length TV shows with Flash, which I thought was awesome. And uh, I tried to figure out how they did it. And slowly but surely, I figured it out. And then, like now that I'm teaching a class, everybody out there, it's out there. You can actually learn it. And you can actually do it. And um, they are. 
the uh, Adobe tutorials on there actually have all these things on there. I actually have some other tutorials on there as well um, with uh, some YouTube people that actually that actually do flash animations professionally and they put tutorials on their on their YouTube channel and they basically show you how to do the stuff right then and there. I mean this I, I'll be honest with you guys it's not something that I can show you guys how to do in an hour. I mean I barely you know I'm sure I probably made you want to animate less by standing up here and talking to you guys. But if you want to do something and animate it and uh, have control over the, the movements and stuff, it, this is a good tool. I mean, it's not the only tool you have to understand, but it is a good tool. And, uh, you know, with Flash 6, CS6, is with their HTML5 integration, it, it kicks out HTML5 right then and there for you, and you can use it on anything. It's really not something that should be thrown away. And if you get anything, if you get the the uh, web edition of of the Creative Suite, uh, standard edition. They don't do standard anymore. Web they don't. Premium. Really? Yeah, web premium, so you can't take it web standard anymore. Do they still have production? I don't remember. But I know web standard went away actually with CS5. I had a brief my but they, but, but they throw in the flash in there. It's like, oh, hey, while you're at it, here's some flash. Yes? I have a question. Oh. Actually, it's not a question. It's a comment. And to answer what this young man was asking about, Jose, we have a video production department that we use Jose a lot for um, continuity packages. So he'll create opens and graphics and continuity throughout the different videos that we do. That's how we rely on him. So typically what happens is we ask Jose to do the impossible with something and then leave him alone for several days to figure out how to get his bones working to make the actual thing come alive. So that's how that's how we utilize him. So he has some, he's his own R&D in that respect as well. But I think that's, that's where you get the practice is that you actually have a, a project you need to do. And so we bring a problem to Jose and he solves the problem <coughs> for us by using Flash. I'm saying that Yes, I mean, if you want to do something very, if you want to do something, like I said, the more time you spend on it, the more complex it can be. I mean, I remember the first time I tried doing an animation, it was like a, I don't know why I did a 15 minute animation, but it took me two and a half months. But that's because I was doing one thing three or four times over to learn it. But the second time I did something, it took me like two weeks. And, and, and l let me tell you something else, too. I, I have never thought of myself as a strong artist. I would not count on myself to draw something off the top of my head. But e that's the thing about Flash. You don't have to. If you know somebody that has graphics, you know, that knows how to draw, and they give you an uh, Illustrator file or even a JPEG, let me show you something real quick. I, for, you know, to... Uh, to sharpen my, my skills, to keep it keep my skills going, I actually tried to do something with uh, animation. So what I did is I, this guy drew all the Star Trek characters, you know, in his style, and these are just drawings. So what I did is I go, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to animate this character. So I I practice and. If you look close, you can see that his head does have the mouth shapes. And every part of his body can move. So and I, I'll have to say, I could do this for months. I could do something like this for months. But, you know, if I were going to do the whole project, I couldn't. But the thing is, I wouldn't have to because 
if you work with people that know how to draw and make like even Photoshop, you can use Photoshop pictures and animate them. Instead of using symbols, you can actually use pictures. I mean, you know. And, and the thing is, you know, what I, my problem was when I first did this was I tried to do it by myself. Now, trying to do f animation by yourself is crazy. I tried twice to do animation for a 48-hour film festival. And the first time, I did it with people. And they actually helped. They drew. They gave me the graphics. I animated them. They edited the, uh, the video while I was working on another part. And I got it. The second time, I tried to do it all by myself. And I failed. Now, if you can get somebody to help you with, you know, even graphics, even audio, it, getting a group together would probably be fantastic to get something like this done. So I would say go to your, you know, your, uh, what do you call those guys? Um, Infra, uh, what do you, what's your, what's the, what do you guys do over there? Uh, in, see, I, I guess I'm nervous here. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. I, I, personally, I myself, I use it for graphics. I mean, sometimes what happens to me is, and my boss will come here. We need you to animate. We need you to make this into a graphic we can use on HD. Here's the picture that we have. Go at it. And I do it in Flash, and I export video, and I, you know, they need something else. If they need certain animation to happen. I do it. Now, is this stuff applicable in a, a interactive Flash? Yes, very much so. And uh, even if if uh, if you look at the tutorials. Would you would you think that something uh, like for what do you call those uh, if if the, the characters needed to dialogue with the person like if there's like a what do you call those guys in between the actions and the in the playthrough? Well, yeah, like when when the character's talking to the, another character playthrough. Case yeah, uh, you think they probably. I would think that it, what I would do in something like that would be I would make a character, and I would use them to discuss and talk. I mean, if you, because if you do, if you want to do video, you can do video, and um, you can set up video, you know, to record the video and edit the video, or you can just do it in Flash, record the audio with a microphone, and uh, it's just another option. Thank you. Well, guys, I wish I could have got more in there, but uh, I hope this was helpful. I, I tried my best.